Now, sometimes it might dawn on you that you can't really figure out what's happening. Uh, sometimes you come over a classical conditioning scenario that doesn't really make a lot of sense to you. And there is a way to figure it out backwards. So in this example, we're going to talk about Tiffany. For a couple of weeks, Tiffany has had a family staying over at her house. When she needs to do some homework, she goes to do it in her room on her bed so she can get some quiet time because her work is very hard. For the two week, Tiffany worked on a lot of homework, some of which was quite complicated and frustrating. After her family went back home, Tiffany began to do her work on her desk in the family room. However, whenever she tried to go to sleep on her bed, she felt frustrated and couldn't fall asleep. Scenarios like this don't always tell you exactly what everything is. So if you have to try to figure out what are the two stimuli, what are the responses, it's a little bit difficult to, to figure it out. However, in these scenarios, what you should try to do is try to do it backwards. Now, from the scenario, what you probably picked up is that when Tiffany went to bed, at the end of the story, she was frustrated and couldn't fall asleep. So in that case, you know what the conditioned stimulus and the conditioned response are. You kind of figured it out backwards. You know that she, when she gets to bed, she's feeling frustrated. So now what you're going to try to do is to figure it out backwards. And in order to do that, you have to know that your neutral stimulus and your conditioned stimulus are always the same thing, specifically if the classical conditioning worked. Your neutral stimulus and your conditioned stimulus are always going to be the same. And your unconditioned response and your conditioned response are also going to be the same thing. So if you know that the bed is a conditioned stimulus, then you also know what your neutral stimulus is. The bed, it has to be. There's no other option. And if you know that the conditioned response is that she feels frustrated, well, then you know that that also has to be the unconditioned response. So you're already halfway there. The one thing you don't know is what is the unconditioned stimulus? There's a couple of ways you can figure it out. You have to ask yourself, in the beginning of the story, what made the unconditioned response happen? And if you can't figure that out, then you might ask yourself, in real life, what makes the unconditioned response happen? And so if the unconditioned response is feeling frustrated, why did Tiffany feel frustrated at the beginning of the story? Or why would you as a person in real life become frustrated? Well, in this case, we can look at the scenario and we know exactly why Tiffany was frustrated at the beginning of the story, because she was doing her homework. And so now we know that the unconditioned stimulus is the homework. Try and go through the rest of these questions and come back to the videos if you feel stuck on one of them. Uh, good luck, everyone.